This episode of How to Drink is brought to you by Audible, and you can get your first audiobook free when you sign up for a 30-day trial at audible.com slash how to drink, or if you text how to drink to 500, 500 Listening to an audiobook can inspire or motivate or change your life in profound ways. Uh, do you want to be more active? Do you want to be in better shape? Do you want to be uh, a better lover? Chances are there's an audiobook that will help you get there. And now, actually, thanks to Audible Originals, there's even more reasons to love Audible. Audible Originals are original titles, they don't exist anywhere else, created by celebrated storytellers from all kinds of diverse backgrounds, whether it's literature, theater, journalism, lots and lots more. I'll be listening to A Short History of Drunkenness by Mark Forsyth, a book that takes a real humorous look at the history of fermentation and distillation and, frankly, inebriation. Hop on over to audible.com slash how to drink or text how to drink to 500 500. Sign up for a 30 day trial and get a free audiobook of your choice today. This is how to drink it today. We're making a Moscow Mule. Finally, let's get it on. Moscow Mule has nothing to do with Moscow. It was invented in Hollywood, California in 1941. There's a little bit of a mystery about who invented it, but we can say for sure that it was invented at the Cock and Bull Bar in the early 40s. Now the owners, of course, claim that they invented it, but owners, as we all know, spend so much time behind the bar. Uh, it was probably this bartender, Wes Price. But nonetheless, what is true is that John G. Martin uh, was an executive at the Hublin Company at the time. Hublin, 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 oh, Hublin. They used to sell pre-mixed cocktails. They, uh, they sold the Brass Monkey of Beastie Boys fame. Brass, a lot of people think Brass Monkey is this thing where you mix 44 and uh, orange juice, but actually Brass Monkey was a pre-mixed tiki cocktail that Hublin sold. And so Brass Monkey, that funky monkey. John G. Martin, executive at Hublin. Uh, Hublin was the American importer of Smirnoff, and of course at the time in the 40s, vodka not very popular in the US, America very much a whiskey and gin country. Uh, vodka wasn't really even seen in the US, uh, except for in insular markets. Um, but they've got it, they gotta sell it. He needs to come up with a drink to sell it. He's going around LA promoting, and of course at his own bar, the Cock and Bull, um, a drink that they call the Moscow Mule. Now, there's a little bit more to that story too. See, because he owned the Cock and Bull Bar with Jack Morgan, they were co-owners there, and Jack Morgan's girlfriend owned a business that um, made copper products. You see where I'm going with this? And maybe also they had bought too much ginger beer that year and they needed to clear out the basement. I mean, that's kind of by their own admission. So what is this drink? This is the Moscow Mule made in a copper mug as it must be made with vodka, ginger beer, and a little bit of lime. Except I don't use ginger beer. I'm gonna use uh, ginger syrup and seltzer. I don't wanna get into what is the right ginger beer? What is the wrong ginger beer? I like Reed's. I think Reed's is a great brand. I think any real, um, I even like regatta. I think regatta is pretty good too. Anything that's real hot and spicy is fine if you wanna go that route. And if you wanna go that route, about four ounces of ginger beer to two ounces of vodka, two part, one part kind of thing. Uh, but we're gonna do it a little different. We're just gonna make it in the glass with um, some seltzer, ginger syrup, and, to, uh, and vodka. And I, I've done a great job of succinctly and drunkenly telling you everything I can think of uh, from the internet about this drink, so why don't we just make the thing in the glass. Step one though, we want to fill this mug with cracked ice about three quarters or halfway. Leave us some room to work, uh, put the drink components in, stir it up, get it a little bit diluted, uh, put the rest of the ice in and then the seltzer. That's the order we're gonna build it in. If you have a fridge that produces crushed ice, go with that. If you have smaller ice cubes, that's fine. My cubes are gigantic. Um, I could throw these in a Lewis bag and smack them with a hammer, but that would produce a more crushed snow-like ice. And what I'm really looking for are cracked ice, things like this. I don't want it to be too crushed. We're gonna start with a two ounce pour of vodka. The original Moscow Mule was made with Smirnoff because that's what Hublin had the rights to import. We're gonna use Kettle One because I found some. I mean, it could have been Absolute. I had a bottle of that somewhere. I had a bottle of Stolich Noya uh, that uh, I, I don't know where it is at the moment. Well, you guys yelled at me for using it that one time. I remember that. But remember that when I said Stolich Naya and you guys were all like, Stolich, what's wrong with you? Well, I don't speak Russian. That's what's wrong with me. Give me a hard time, why don't you? I'm gonna use two ounces of my ginger syrup here.
I want one ounce of lime juice. I had a cutting board, here it is. And now I'm gonna give that a stir. Most of the dilution here comes from seltzer. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to incorporate my ingredients as best I can. We got a nice frost on the outside of this mug. And I'm gonna leave it with the stirring rod because this is a 40 drink and that's a 40 stirring rod. I think it's pretty appropriate. And I'm gonna to top my mug with seltzer. And I can see from the inside of my mug that I'm about 50%. And so we want a two to one ratio of seltzer to everything else here. I think we're about good. I'm gonna take these uh, eighths of lime and we're gonna cut a notch here and park it on the side of my glass like so. Let's see if this is any good. My Moscow Mule, 41 style. Oh, it's delicious. Oh my God, that's great. That's fantastic. That tastes just like, honestly, it just tastes like ginger beer. It just tastes like a delicious ginger soda. And apparently there's some vodka and they're snuck in. And that's kind of the idea with this. We're not really trying to feature the vodka, put the vodka out in front, taste the vodka, sample the vodka, enjoy the aroma or the essence of vodka. This is a easy to drink drink in a copper mug. It's great, it is delicious. It is a lovely liquid candy. It doesn't ask you for anything. It doesn't ask you to consider alternate flavors. It's not an acquired taste, you know? It is a sweet ginger candy. With, a, with just a bit of heat, right? Because we've diluted it pretty far. I mean, if you were to just drink a ginger beer, that's got some ginger fire in it. This has a little taste of that, the, just the inkling of it. But in truth, it is just dangerously easy to drink. Dangerously easy to drink. One fun thing about the copper mug, which of course has no real historical precedent, right? This is a marketing gimmick invented by these guys in the 40s, but um, old sailing ships, the fastest of the old sailing ships, were copper jacketed. They would line the wooden hulls on the outside with copper sheathing because the salt, acidic nature of the ocean interacted with that copper and it produced a mild electrical charge that prevented barnacles and things from clinging to the boat. And this was the thing that was the primary reason the boat slowed down. Actually, you lose a lot of speed from that and the scraping your hull is a really important part of sailing. Now, most of these copper mugs are either lined with something or they're a different metal on the inside. They are just gimmicky, and even mine are. But I often wonder, you put lime into a copper mug, a little acid, a little copper, you've made kind of a battery there. You could, there could be something in this electrical charge between the two that makes this drink sort of unique. So maybe there's something to that, maybe there isn't. Um, there's no charge in this at all because actually these are lined with stainless steel for food safeness. There is an argument to be made that you could muddle this instead of juicing it. It adds an element of unpredictability. Um, you could also add mint to it, but then of course now we're back to something that isn't a Moscow Mule. Now it's, it's a different drink. I just think that you keep this drink the way it is. Copper mug, crushed ice, ginger beer, or ginger syrup and seltzer, vodka, and lime juice. Um, Let's not make the Moscow Mule into something it doesn't need to be. This is just an easy to drink summer cooler that fits in your hand neatly. That's the show, guys. I made a Moscow Mule. It's freaking delicious. If you like the show, I hope you will subscribe. I'm on Twitter at how to drink with a number. I have an Instagram at how to drink with a number. Um, my Patreon is patreon.com slash how to drink. And if you really like the show and you want to check that out, boy, that would be super nice of you. Thank you so much. That's the show, guys. See you guys next week with another cocktail on how to drink. Uh, if you have your own recipe for a Moscow Mule, it's a little different, a little more complex, a little bit more elevated, and I think that there's room to improve it, but hey, question, what is it? What is a Moscow Mule when you start changing it? Um, I'd love to hear about it, though. Please leave me a comment, shoot me a message, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll see you next week with another cocktail on how to drink. <sighs> Call me a car, I'm drunk. Good night. Oh, cut.